Hi, we've got a very special podcast um, today because we've got Johnny Edgar on the show, who's a Red Bull junior. He's currently in FIA Formula 3, has a very successful background in karting and in Formula 4, uh, and we're going to have a nice chat with him today. So, so yes. do you want to start? Or shall I? You can start, yeah. So um, you come from a, a racing family. So I understand, what was there, 13 of your family members that have raced? Yeah, it's something like that. Uh, I don't know exactly the number, but yeah, it was a lot. So uh, how, yeah. how did that come about then? So so what have they raced? Uh, nearly all of them in karting because there's a track that's like two minutes from where I live. And yeah, pretty much the same village as where a lot of my family lived. Yeah. And yeah, some of my family members like helped to build it, uh-huh. helped to build the tracks. So then yeah, a lot of a lot of them raced from that. Uh, yeah, some of my family members, like my mum and dad, met because of racing, because my mum's brother also raced, so oh, really? yeah, most of my family's just involved with it. Yeah, and did any of them move to cars, or did they stay in karting? Uh, my dad and my uncle both did a little bit in cars, but my dad, I think, only did maybe like a winter series, uh, I think in Vauxhall Junior or something, and my uncle did a little bit more, but not. Not loads, most of them uh, just stayed in karting. Sure, sure. So um, I suppose being born into that world, um, was it kind of a given that you were you were going to go into the racing world or um, was it just something that you had a passion for straight away, being surrounded by it? Yeah, like from when I was really young, I'd always be at the tracks watching my dad racing. So then yeah, I was always around him and yeah, I... Obviously, if I didn't want to do it, I wasn't forced or anything. But yeah, I wanted to do it. Uh, I think I first drove when I was three years old. Is that right? And then, yeah, since then, just drove since. Yeah. So it's so quite that... inevitable then that you were going to be a racing driver. Really. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, I've been around it. Yeah, so since I was born, pretty much going yeah. to tracks. Yeah. So at three, were you in a Bambino cart then? Yeah, I was yeah. in a Bambino cart when I was, yeah. Yeah, until I was six, seven. Mm-hmm. So do you do you remember that? Because obviously that's quite early. Yeah, I remember some things like obviously only a little bit, but there is some things I remember from yeah. not long after I just started. Yeah, and then obviously you've had a successful career in karting. Um, so you've been obviously European champion, and was your aim always to to get to cars? Yeah, I think it always was. I always yeah, from when I was young, wanted to be a Formula One driver. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the aim was always to go to cars. Mm-hmm. And then luckily I became a Red Bull junior, so that's also helped, yeah, oh, the move yeah. to cars from karting. So did you become a Red Bull junior in karting or once you'd moved to cars? No, it was in karting the year I won the European Championship. Right. Uh, yeah, that year, but just, we just got quite, I think, four people from karting we got that year. And yeah, because, well, I think there was two of them who kind of were already going to get it, and then they did quite well. But then I, yeah, I, I won, so then I got it because of that. Okay. And then, yeah, I've been a Red Bull Junior since, so it was like September 2017, I think, when it was announced. Yeah. And did you see a big change, you know, once it was announced that you're a Red Bull Junior, did you notice more attention on yourself, having that kind of, I I guess, that name above you? No, not really. I think, obviously, it's a good thing to be a part of, and yeah, pretty much everyone's heard of it who's involved, but no, there's not. I didn't really get much more attention from it. I didn't feel like. Yeah, yeah. And sorry, go on. I was gonna say, so um, it must have been quite an exciting day when that happened. Then the Red Bull thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we got we got an email from Dr. Marco asking uh, for a meeting. So we yeah, went to his office in Austria. Yeah. And yeah, had had a meeting there, and then, yeah, it was kind of when we went, it was pretty quick. He kind of said. Yeah, we signed the contract then, and then it was announced a month or so later, I think. Yeah. Wow. And what was it like then meeting him and, and going there? Were you a bit apprehensive? Yeah, I was a bit scared the first time. But yeah, it's fine now when I meet him. Like, he's actually really nice to speak to. And yeah, he's not really scary. And yeah, he's like, he's honest. He'll tell you what he thinks. And But yeah, yeah he, it's quite fun speaking to him. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. he can, he can. He has an air, it could be a bit scary, but I guess that's just the public that you see. But when you're working with him, it's not like that. Yeah, it's different. Obviously, yeah, he's 
he is honest. Like, if he doesn't think you've done well enough, he'll say, and like, but I think he is always fair with what he says. Like, he never, if someone does well, he'll say, and anything he thinks he could improve, he'll tell them. Yeah. But it's, I, I wouldn't, I never think he said anything to me that wasn't correct, let's say. Like, he's always, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's I think fair, it's always fair. Yeah, fair, constructive, yeah, fair. Yeah. That, that kind of way. And, and what yeah. kind of support do you get from Rebel? So you become a, a Rebel junior. So what changes at that point? Obviously, you get some financial support, but I think one of the biggest things is obviously uh, the simulator you get to do at the Red Bull factory. Like before every race, I get to go there. Okay. And especially with, especially with Formula 3, there's, so, there's such limited track time, so it helps to yeah, get used to the track, learn it. Mm-hmm. I think it just helps because we only have one practice session and we only get a couple of laps. So it, it does help just to be quicker up to speed, which is really important in Formula 3. Uh-huh. And then also... Just to, I've had so many people that if you need something, it's easy to get in contact with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like also some things easy, like they saw all the contracts with the teams, mm-hmm. helmet suits and stuff, it's all sorted through them. So even that, it's, it's easier that way as well. So do they make the decision then on what team you go with or, or do you and the family have any say in that? We have a little bit of say, but it's more of their decision. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like who you go with, which series. So yeah, it's most of their decision who they put you with, mm-hmm. and they sort all the yeah sort all the contracts and stuff. But we you do have a little bit of say, but it's yeah, it's definitely more of their decision. So why do you think then they've put you with Carlin? What why do you think? Obviously, I know Carlin are yeah, hugely yeah. successful, but what are your thoughts on that or why they've put you there? Yeah, I think obviously yeah, Carlin. Are, won a lot but we've had a lot of Red Bull juniors in the past and they had uh, Suno- Yuki Sonoda last year in Formula 2 and he was really quick with them yeah. so I think it's also because of that yeah I've already worked with them before so they kind of know how the team works. Mm-hmm. So obviously Carlin are a long way from home for you um, do you get to go to their factory much or you're obviously you're going down there to do to drive the Red Bull sim you're on your way yeah, I've been I've been a couple of times to Carlin to do like a seat fit and some simulator. Yeah, I think before most races I'll go there as well, as well yeah. as um Red Bull. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's quite part of it. So, so is the Red Bull factory the ball yeah. pretty far away from me. Yeah, yeah. Mind you, I guess you'll get used to travelling around. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but you already now. have, I suppose, haven't you? So we're yeah. Formula Four then. So you've done two years in Formula Four and you've done what the Italian the British and the German, no, just is that right? Italian and German. Yeah, okay, okay. So um, what, is there any differences between that? So the cars themselves, is there any differences between the Italian and the German? No, it's the exact same car. Okay. Uh, yeah, same tyres, everything. The rules are pretty much the same. There's actually little differences, but the main difference I'd say is like the German, there's a lot less people, but if there's 15 people, like, 13 of them are like pretty good whereas in Italian you have 35 cars but then there's still only 10 people that are like quite good so it's in Germany in some ways it's a lot better because you get a lot less red flags and safety cars you get a lot more time actual racing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then yeah the Italian is always a lot more traffic a lot more red flags in the practice and qualifiers and safety cars in races yeah so is the Italian one is that run centrally by one team because no, the French ones run like that, isn't it? But um, or, or is it all- no, it's, it's, you have different teams in right. all in, uh, yeah, German and Italian. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's a few already of like like Prema already have an F4 team. Like they have a team and everything. Yeah, there's still quite a few big teams. We've done a lot in the past who do form before. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's it was when it was first like um, made like form before. It was made to be like a lower level series, but now. But it's so professional because obviously everyone wants to win, so then it just gets more and more so it's run. So That's some of the like, Red Bull juniors have done Formula Renault or Formula Alpine, it probably is now. So how did they decide whether to do Formula Four or Formula Renault? Is that uh, well? I think with the old Formula Renault cars, it, well, initially Formula Renault was like the first step everyone did, yeah. but when Formula Four didn't exist, and then. Yeah, I think most of them did Formula Renault because the cars then were really good and yeah, a lot of good teams in it. And the how the series is run and the calendar for Renault has always been really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think when yeah, I think 
a lot of them were in Brenham and 20, 2018 was the first time I had like young people who were just starting off again because yeah. I think most people joined Red Bull once or already racing in something. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, I think then they put some people in Formula 4. Yeah. And they, yeah, I think they did the British one. Mm -hmm. And then I think, yeah, I think because they did the British one, this, the grid was quite small. So then because of them doing that, that's why I did the Italian and German. Sure. But then the, the Formula Renault car changed and it's like quite a quite heavy car now. So I think it'd be quite a big step to go straight to bath and carting with the yeah, heavy with car. Okay. Right. And yeah. I I think some teams that don't like it, like it's not that much faster than F4, but it's quite heavy. Yeah. And yeah, it's quite a bit more expensive and you can't test as much. So I think it makes more sense to do Formula 4 because you get so much more track time. Sure. Yeah. And, yeah, it's a, a bit easier to go straight into it because the, the new Formula Renault car, or Formula Alpine now is, yeah, I think it'd be a really big step with like how heavy it is. Mm -hmm. So on that note then, how did you find the transition, you know, from karting to cars? I mean, I went from karts to cars and noticed obviously that weight, that mass. Um, in, in karts, you can be quite digital, quite aggressive. How, so how did you find that? Yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing was probably just like the braking, like how hard you have to press the brake. Yeah. And also, I'd just say like, e even in Formula 4, you don't have much downforce, but just high speed corners, mm -hmm. uh, carrying speed and also getting used to like, yeah, having a, a car move around because obviously in car and it's quite easy to control. It's quite small, mm -hmm. but in cars, it's so much bigger. So getting confidence with the car, like moving around, especially in Formula 4, it kind of has to, to be quick. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just gaining confidence with that really yeah. you know, was, was a big thing because there's so much more weight to it and yeah, it's a bit hard to correct if you have a big big slide. Yeah, absolutely. So do Red Bull provide driver coaching? I know they do the same and you have the engineer at the team, but do you have any any a, a driver coach as such? No, I don't have a driver coach, but obviously the engineers you have, like a big part of their job is like the driver coach inside. So yeah, looking through the data and sure. telling yeah. you where to improve. Sure. Especially in Formula 4, that's like one of the bigger parts. Like the car matters a bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, how the, the driver matters, but also how the coach is that if they can coach it in a way that you understand, it obviously helps you to improve a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in Formula 3, it's still the same, but the car starts to matter a bit more then. And yeah, there's more, you can, yeah, find more time with the car. And there's always something with the driver, but I'd say it's a bigger percentage of the car than in Formula 4. And I think, yeah, as you carry on moving up, yeah. The car matters more, yeah. and as everyone gets more experienced, everyone drives so much closer. Whereas in Formula Four, you see big gaps between drivers because everyone's just starting out. Yeah, yeah. And how have you found the jump then? So you know, also the cars are quite a bit quicker. I assume there's quite a bit more aero on the FIA F3 cars. So did that feel like quite a big jump going from F4 to to F3? Yeah, it was a really big jump. Uh, again, it was the braking and kind of how, how much you could break into the corners because you had the downforce and high speed corners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a bit also the tyres in Formula 3. Uh, they drop off really quick. Like on with new tyres, it's like one lap you get, you warm up and have one lap and then that's it really. That's a quickest lap. Yeah. Uh, so that was another big step. And also while trying to learn the car, it's quite difficult because. You have grip for one or two laps and then it drops off so you try and improve something but the grip's getting less and less yeah mm -hmm. and then you get the grip with new tires again but you haven't had chance to try over again and improve slowly because you get such a big step up in grip mm -hmm. yeah so to improve with new tires is hard and also to improve enough when you put the new tires because you have to you can go quite a lot quicker in every corner mm -hmm. and yeah break a bit later a bit harder mm -hmm. earlier on power yeah. So that, that's another big thing. And I think it makes it hard to adjust to the car because of that reason. Mm -hmm. Because you, yeah, you have you have so little, like on, on a track like Barcelona, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like the second lap, you already lose three, four attempts with the tyres. You already can't, you already have to lift so much more in the high speed corners. Yeah, bits are on front everywhere. Yeah, because of course you were on pole, weren't you, for um, for the feature race in, in um, Barcelona, and um, you could see obviously how quick you were, but you could see the guys that were already seasoned, done it for longer, how they 
understood how to manage that tire, I suppose. Um, it's a, a steep learning curve, I guess, to, to try and remain at the front, be really quick and manage your tires at the same time. Yeah, I think, yeah, in Barcelona, I started pole for the first race because there's a top 12 reverse from qualifying. So I think on Barcelona and the testing, we struggled a lot as well, like mm -hmm. just with speed in general for the whole team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going into qualifying, I just wanted to be top 12. That was the main goal, really, because yeah, I didn't, not much else was possible. And I managed to get P12 and then start pole. Yeah. But again, in, in the races, it was the same in all three. It was just the first first few laps wasn't bad. And then even when saving the tyres a lot, uh, the tyres would drop off a lot. And I think after the weekend, we understood why, like what we had with the car that was making it do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, just how we had the car set up was, it was okay for a few laps. And then the tyres were just dropping off really quick, yeah. even while having, even while trying to save them quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So in the races, it was quite difficult. Mm -hmm. But even in the qualifying there, we did struggle quite a bit mm -hmm. compared to, I think, we had other tests where it was a lot better. So mm -hmm. hopefully for the rest of the season, it should be better than there. Yeah. But I think it, it was good to get the results I did, considering uh, the pace we had. Because you're 10th at the moment, aren't you, in the championship? But there's quite a lot yeah. of second-year drivers above you, isn't there? Yeah. You know, it's mostly second-year drivers above you. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's two um two people who are rookies head and they're both in the same team. I think. Yes. Yeah. On on that track, the team they're in, they were pretty quick and in qualifying in the races. So yeah, but then the rest of people are head uh, second year drivers. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. do you, do you think Carlin now have learned a lot from Barcelona? So you hope for the next round, you know, there'll be a little bit more around that with the tires and and get that that pace back that that you guys need. Yeah, I think it was also just a, a track bit thing as well because we we struggled, yeah, from the start of the test there, we struggled quite a bit. And we had the test in Red Bull Ring, we were pretty quick from the start. So I just think that track, we just never really were quick enough. But I think the other track should be better. And we did understand why, which is also important. So if it happens again, you can fix it. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. But I think they've yeah, struggled the last two years in Formula 3, but we've got some different engineers now, some of the F2 ones. Okay. So I think we're improving. Yeah. Yeah. We're improving, but I think, obviously, from where we're at last year, yeah, it might take a little bit to improve, but I think we've just got to try and improve through the whole year. Uh -huh. I think it should be fine. Well, that's one of the strengths of Carlin, because they've got everything from Indy cars down to Formula 4. They've got personnel that with massive amounts of experience in the team, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Like one of the the chief engineer we have from Formula Two is now in Formula Three. He like worked with Landon Norris a lot when he was in Carlin. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we also have the the Indy Car and Indy Lights team in America, which yeah. I think will be helpful for our last round we have in Cota because they have all the data there. So we'll probably hopefully be able to use some of that absolutely uh, before we go to yeah just learn a bit about the track. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what about the physical side? So obviously you say about the braking and, and of course the general G-force and also this morning when I spoke to you, said, well, I'm at the gym at the moment. So do you have a, a coach, a fitness coach that guides you through all this? Because obviously there are specifics, aren't there, that you need like neck strength as well as leg strength and so on. Yeah, I have a, a fitness trainer. Mm -hmm. He also does um, one of the driver who lives quite local, so yeah, we both do that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And what, sort of training, what sort of training do you do then? Like, it's loads of different stuff, really, because you need, you need like, your leg needs to be strong for braking, your mm -hmm. upper body strength you need for, like, for steering everything, and also your neck. So it's it's everything, really. just depends. just a mix of things. I think just, yeah, yeah. everything, really. Yeah. <laughs> And, and do you enjoy it, the fitness side? Is that like a part that, because obviously I know with some drivers, it's a bit of a chore. So they find <laughs> other other ways of, of keeping fit, whether it's going out cycling or, you know, mountain climbing or whatnot. Um, so so for you, do you mind being in the gym and, and working on that side? Well, it's not my favourite thing, but it's not too bad. I don't mind it too much. Yeah, yeah. obviously you've got to do it, so it's fine. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you, can see, you can see the aim to it yeah so the red bull keep you busy most of the time then no i have quite a lot of time well now i finished school like uh last year so i have a bit more time now because yeah. when i was in school still, it was always really busy like 
I miss quite a lot but when I come home, like mm-hmm. sometimes get home at 4 a.m. and school that day. Yeah. But, yeah. but now, yeah, I'm not too busy. And but what, I still, yeah, still have some Red Bull, uh, yeah, that simulator that I have. Yeah. So what on, on the educational side then is is now the focus, you know, plan A, let's push with, with this with F3, or are you going to also try and do, I don't know, some sort of motor engineering degree or something on the side, or is it purely let's focus this direction? No, I think for now it's just focusing on racing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, especially with Red Bull, obviously it's, kind of have one chance at it so yeah. just putting everything into it and yeah obviously if it doesn't work out you can always go and get uh, some sort of education afterwards so absolutely. all the focus is in racing at the moment yeah yeah mm. absolutely i can agree more so who, who do you have anybody that you model yourself on so i'll see looking up at you know i'll see you've got people like max verstappen and sergio and and so many drivers is there anybody you really look up to yeah, I think at the moment in Formula 1, it's Matt Verstappen, just, yeah, how he drives. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, also he's overtaking everything I, and how fast he is. And, yeah, compared to all the teammates he's had in the last three years, yeah, three different cards, three teammates, he's been quite far ahead of all of them. Mm-hmm. So I think that's yeah, really impressive. And mm. yeah, also, like, he's overtaking, but he does when he needs to as well. Like, I think some of the overtakes, he's the only one who... Tries them and sometimes it doesn't work out, but it's also exciting like that. And yeah. sometimes you need to because if you don't, then you're never going to win, anyways. Absolutely, you've got to be kind of feisty, haven't you? And I know when he first started out, he got a bit of stick for that, but he was learning. And and I think it's almost better to be that way, isn't it? Than you know, no disrespect, but somebody like Vouchy Bottas, who's a little bit more reserved when it comes to actually battling on the track. So I think, yeah, absolutely, you've got to sometimes take those risks haven't you yeah i think it's always easier to bring it back a bit than like than get that yeah, in the easy, first place easy, yeah it's easier to slow it down than it is to speed it up yeah yeah absolutely, yeah. Uh, absolutely. so did you watch monaco at the weekend yeah i did <laughs> uh, yeah and what so um i mean do you find that inspiring i imagine you probably do but obviously seeing max on the top step especially monaco it's so special um you know for you does that just fire you up even more you know to try and get there yeah it's obviously where i want to be in the future and yeah i think just racing an f1 car in general would be really good mm-hmm. but then yeah and the goal at the moment would just be to get to formal one but then obviously once you're there you want to stay and get into a good team podiums yeah. and whatever yeah and is there anything else on the radar? I know this might seem like an odd question at the age you are now, because of course Formula One is is your goal. But would there any be anything else in the future that you would like to do, like Le Mans or IndyCar or anything like that? Yeah, I think yeah, Le Mans are obviously a really cool race, and mm-hmm. IndyCar too. Uh, I don't know if I'd like the oval so much. I, I like. I think it'd be quite good, but yeah, they are quite dangerous. Obviously, the speeds you're going. It is pretty dangerous, but yeah, IndyCar also looks good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, yeah, stuff like WEC and G- yeah. even GT3. I think, yeah, obviously everyone wants to be in Formula 1, but even if not, there's plenty of options to, yeah, drive in something else some good stuff about. and oh. still get paid. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, the world endurance stuff is is coming into a big era, actually, with manufacturers and things. So I think... The thing is, once you've done like you are FIA F3, F2, you know, and hopefully you'll be in Formula One, I just think it opens so many other doors anyway, mm. you know, because single seaters seem to always be the most respective form of, of the sport. Yeah, we're educational, almost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, so hopefully it creates even more opportunities for you going forward. Yeah. yeah. So I've got a young guy coming on who um, already looks up to you called Ty Cuthbert. That name mean anything to you, but he won his first championship in one of your old carts. Does that name ring a bell? Yeah. Not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so he so we've got him coming up. So there's people looking up to you already. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So he's he's a young carter. He, he apparently bought your old two I don't know which two stroke this is to be fair. Um, but yeah, and he uh he's already looking up to you. So you've already got drivers, you know, already focusing on you and looking at what you're doing as you move up through the through the ranks. So do you think your plan is to stay in F3 for two years? Yeah, I, I really don't know. Yeah, it's not <laughs> my decision. And yeah, Red Bull choose. I think it'll it'll depend how this year goes and 
-hmm. I think it also depends on what options are available for teams because I think if if there's a really good option for F2, even if you haven't had a good year, I think then maybe move you up if you think there's a good chance of a good team. Yeah. Or if there's maybe a good chance of a really good team in F3, they might keep me there. I, I don't really know. It's it's not really my decision. Yeah. yeah. But I think, yeah, whether I'm, whether I'm in F3 another year or maybe F2, I think both are good options. Oh, yeah. absolutely. So how do you deal with the mental stress because of course you know we've both raced obviously I know we're much older than you um but um you know I I always found the pressure something very difficult to deal with how, how do you find that especially now obviously being a Red Bull junior there's more focus on you you're in FIA F3 you know so is there any kind of coping mechanisms or, or how do you find it no for me I, I don't struggle with the pressure too much I just I just try and do my best and then yeah I just see what that's what it is yeah, I think I, yeah I can only do my best and then mm -hmm. yeah like in in Barcelona I was a little bit nervous before the first race obviously it's my first F3 race yeah uh, first time yeah I was on pole and also the how you do the start with the hand clutch is quite different in F3 mm -hmm. so I was a little bit nervous with that but yeah that, that was the only time really apart from that fine I, yeah, it's yeah. something that I don't really struggle with much uh, which is great yeah, because I think that's one of um, Max Verstappen's strongest points is his, and the same with somebody like Lewis Hamilton and things, is that that mental strength, mm. um, you know, under pressure to perform. And I think that's something that the very best have. So, you know, that's great that you feel that way. Um, do you have any other questions for your clients um, to ask? I don't think so. Well, we, I was going to ask you about your, um, your cousin Jessica. Do, do, yeah. do, you, do you giving her much help? Yeah, a little bit. Obviously, uh, she's still in Carton at the moment, and obviously, I haven't done that for a while, so it's quite difficult with that because you kind of forget quite a bit. But yeah. uh, she did, um, she did some driving, and yeah, I think especially if she does move to Formula Four or something like that, then I'll be able to give her a bit more advice because it's yeah. something I've done more recently. Absolutely. Yeah, if, if um, I ever can, I do. But yeah, she does pretty well on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't you, when you're racing, you already get told by enough people like you dad or someone who's there, and then the mechanic tells you you hear it from the team as well. So yeah, yeah. sometimes, well, you, sometimes you don't need to hear things again. Yeah, yeah. of course, of course. Yeah, and like you say, it's it is different. Um actually we had somebody um his name's Ed P. He knows your dad, I think. Um, but he he went back into a car for the first time in a long time and he couldn't believe how different it was because you sort of train yourself in cars you know like you say the braking is so different and trail braking and managing all of this kind of stuff and getting back into a car where it's so explosive and kind of on and off and so yeah I get what you're saying that it'd be quite hard to suddenly coach it you know somebody in karting again when your you know aim is in cars now mm. and learning that so but um, no, thank you so much. Yes, thank um, you. You know, really appreciate you coming on and um, all the best for the next round. Yeah. So you we'll feeling, <laughs> you feeling prepared and ready? Yeah, it's yeah, just <laughs> quite a while. So I'm a bit bored already of not driving. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a sim at home? Or yeah, you, I do. Oh, you do? Okay. So do you do, but, much yeah. on, do much on that as well? Yeah, sometimes I do just for fun mostly. Yeah. But yeah, it's, that's one thing different with F3 as well. You have so much time off and you're not allowed to test, whereas Formula 4, we yeah. have like so many more race weekends, but also just testing a lot more. Mm. So that's something quite different as compared to kart. And in Formula 3, the track time's so limited. Yeah. And even when you are, like, the other practice, we get maybe like five push laps. Mm -hmm. But by the second one already, the tyres have gone off. So it's, yeah, yeah that's difficult. And look, so much, you have so many weeks out of the car. Yeah, and then you have five laps, then you're into qualifying. Yeah, so, yeah. You need so, good how, speed many, how many tests are you actually officially allowed to do then in F3 before each round? Uh, we had we have three tests of two days, so we had Red Bull Ring, Barcelona, and Jerez, and they're all official tests, and that's it. And then that's not allowed to do anything else. Yes, yeah, so that's really tough, that's isn't it? Is. You know, especially yeah. the rookie coming in to try and learn a car. You know that yeah and, that yeah and some tracks we go to like never driven them mm. before practice you can get one 40 minute practice but what's so difficult is you usually have old tires in practice mm -hmm. and then so the grips were less and quite often we're the first ones on track mm -hmm. but then the formula on labor will be down all day 
and then we're like the last out on Friday for qualifying. Mm-hmm. So you get way more grip with the tyres, way more grip with uh, the track. Yeah. And there might be a track that you don't even know properly, like you've had five or six actual proper laps, and then you're into qualifying. And even when you in qualifying, you maybe get three or four laps only. Yeah. So, yeah, it's difficult. It's changed so much in that way, hasn't it? If you think how it used to be, and like with Formula One, they could just do as much as they wanted, yeah, really. Yeah. You know, Huge the mileage. track, yeah. yeah, the track time. And now for you guys, that that puts you all under a lot more pressure. So, do you find the simulator helps a lot in between to at least learn the circuits? Yeah, I think for learning circuits, it helps a lot. Mm-hmm. And then I think the for the smaller details, I don't I don't find many simulators help because even ones that are quite realistic but not that good. The only one I feel that's actually really good is the Red Bull one. Yeah. It has has a little bit of movement, it, like, but it's done well. Like, you don't really feel the movement and yeah, how the how they got the car modeled is really close to the F3 car. Okay. And also the tracks, they're all we get all like the tracks that we use for the F1 since they're all modeled really good because we like obviously scan them all. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. I think yeah, the Red Bull one especially helps a lot. Yeah. And does it does it actually have like because uh, I obviously again being older than you, I, I was at McLaren and I did a, a simulator test with them and they had like a hydraulic helmet and uh, the whole the whole cockpit actually moved. Does it does it actually move as well? Yeah, the whole thing moves like it's not it's a fair bit, but I like and you don't really feel it's weird because yeah. like I've, I saw it once when someone was on it and I was surprised how much it moved because some of the like one simulators have been like move a bit. You kind of feel it, I think, because it's not, it's like a little bit unnatural, but with how the Red Bull one is, it, it feels so natural, but you don't really notice at all. Yeah, so that's great. It's useful. It's good, yeah. Yeah, it's useful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Sorry, I won't keep you any longer. I could <laughs> ask questions all day, <laughs> as you can probably tell. But no, thanks so much, Johnny, for coming on. Um, wish you all Thank the you. best, obviously, going forward. Uh, we'll keep a close eye on you. And then hopefully um, we can get you back on when you've progressed a little bit further. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, thank you. All, all right. Thanks, okay, thanks. 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 All right. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.